Hello everyone and welcome to this short iXload overview video. In this brief getting started tutorial, we will explore the main iXload elements when creating a test, running it, evaluating the statistics, and finally generating a test report. iXload provides multiplay service emulation to test and validate the scale, performance, and quality of experience of real-time and business critical applications. It can be used to test a broad set of protocols and applications ranging from video, voice, data, storage, and even Layer 2 3 access technologies like IPsec and point-to-point -point protocols. Now let's take a look at iXload. First, let's start with an orientation to the workspace. On the left here, you have a frame that shows the different config high-level configuration options. The workflow is relatively simple. You start with configuring your networks and traffic, which includes the network stack and the application stack. Then you move to the timeline and the objective. And then once that's completed, you configure the ports. Now I'll go through the step-by-step -step process of configuring each of these objects. All right, so first what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the network and the application activity. So I'm going to add a net traffic to the originate as well as to the terminate. And then for each of these, I'm going to add the application activity. So we'll have an HTTP client on the originate side and an HTTP server on the terminate side. So now let's take a look at the network configuration for the originate and the terminate. So when a network is added, it comes with a default address. These addresses can be changed and can be incremented up to uh, thousands of values if chosen. They also have the ability to add multiple elements if there are ranges, if there are non-contiguous ranges that are desired to be configured into that IP element in that stack. In addition to that, additional protocols can be added or the stack can be completely deleted and then added with a, com with a different set of elements added to that stack. The next step is to configure the client and server for SSL and set up a command transaction to get a page from the server. So we'll start with the server side first. I'll select the activity that I added and then I'll go to SSL and enable it. Just as a note, there are pre-configured pages that are already available and we'll be using one of these pages. There is the option, however, to add additional rows for pages to change the page names and even to pull in a file or set some custom parameter for the content that will be available to the client on the simulated server. On the client side, I need to add the command. But first, what I need to do is enable SSL here. And uh, we'll add the, we'll say it's TLS 1.2. And for the SSL version, the available ciphers will be present that can be then added. So these are the ciphers that are available for negotiation. And right now I just have the server side set to default. So I'll leave the client side at default as well. For HTTP, we'll go ahead and we'll select HTTP 1.1. And now we'll go to commands and we'll add a get SSL. Here, I need to point to the server, which if this is a real server, for example, if you're going to hit the internet, you can utilize a URL. But that also requires that you go into the 
client stack and set the DNS. You can also just simply put in an IP address here if you know the server's specific IP. The final minimum step for configuring the command is just to simply add, add to page content. Once again to note, if using a real server, you will have to know the URL path and put it into the property value here in order to be able to grab the correct page. So now let's move on to configuring timeline and objective. Starting with the objective type, there's a variety of different objective types that are available. And what IXload will do is for the length of the runtime, attempt to achieve the objective value for the selected objective type. Depending on the application traffic, the objective type will change. For this particular configuration, we'll just choose to use a specific amount of throughput and leave the objective value at 100 megabits per second. For the timeline, this is where the configured sustain time is found. And we'll go ahead and we'll configure this to run for two minutes with a ramp down time of 20 seconds. And the reason for this is to allow the connections that are established to be able to close their sessions in a, in a in a graceful manner. The next step now is to add the ports, apply the configuration, and start the test execution. So we'll select ports. I will choose add chassis. And I'll type in the IP address of the chassis that I'll be using. There is the option as well if you've had chassis that have already been used in your configuration, iXload will remember them and allow you to use a recent chassis configuration. Though I did type in the IP address, I'll go ahead and I'll select my recently used chassis and then connect to it. Now the way iXload works is it actually actively will load balance the client side and the server side configuration as long as there's enough IP addresses for the distribution to each of the traffic elements that we've configured, both on the originate side and on the terminate side. This makes it very easy for configuring scaling. For the objective that we've defined, however, we only need one port per traffic. Once the port assignments have been made, you can choose to apply the configuration or start to test. Applying configuration will uh, allow you to first check to make sure that you have the connectivity and everything is present before you run. Actually, where this is most useful is where you have your source and your destination on two completely separate networks with maybe some sort of routing in between. And you're not quite sure that the application traffic will be able to hit the, that destination first before you, before you start the traffic transmission. So in our case, I'm quite confident because it's back to back and I'll go ahead and select start the test. Once the ex test execution is started, the log here will show the progress of the configuration and then when the configuration has been pushed to the chassis element it'll switch over to statistics what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out the transaction rate window and then I'm going to choose throughput objective because that's the objective that we chose with the test execution. The first thing that you're going to be looking at here is to ensure that, you're, that you have a set of concurrent connections. If you're just seeing a connection attempt rate, that means that the TCP sessions are not being established. 
that leads back to the discussion around connectivity issues between the originate and terminate traffics. If you're seeing that your connections are being established and maintained, then you want to look at your throughput objective and ensure that your throughput objective is being achieved. If your throughput objective is not being achieved or if you're failing to, to establish TCP connections, there are additional statistics that you can look at. And there's up to four views that you can have in this window at any time. I'm going to manage these views a little bit, however, because of screen real estate. So I'm going to close the throughput connection, throughput objective, and we'll look at the TCP failures. So here we have no failures, which is very good. But typically what will occur is you'll see retries and timeouts if there is an issue with establishing a connection between the originate and the terminate. It means you want to look at the and ensure that there is connectivity between the client and the server or potentially if there's any type of security element or some sort of proxy function that may potentially be in between the two elements that you have the capability to initiate and terminate transactions between your client and server. Now that the test is completed, let's generate a report. So we'll come up here to the reports tab. And what we'll do is we'll choose to customize report. And then you have a template that's associated with one of the application activities. You can expand upon this and see everything that's built into the template. Also on the right here, you can see all the different page options that are available. And it allows you the option to add or remove any of these values from this template. So if you want to make any changes to the template, such as adding and removing sections that are not necessary in regards to reporting the performance of your test run, you can remove those. Once you've completed editing your template, you can then choose to generate it by into either a PDF or an HTML. So what we're going to do is generate a PDF. And then you'll get a progress bar here that'll tell you where you're at in regards to generating a report. Report generation is complete. So let's take a look at some of the details of the report. We can navigate the report from the uh, table of contents view. And what you'll do is you'll find any information that's relevant to your particular objective here. Uh, in particular, this was run with HTTP and SSL. So you'll have under your KPIs, your HTTP throughput, as well as the clients and connections, cumulative totals, average rates for both the client and server side, as well as any detailed data that you've seen in the actual active statistics captured in the report. This concludes the demo of how to configure HTTP with SSL in iXload. Thank you for watching.